Welcome to the shop. Today we're talking about MIG welding basics for beginners. And the good news is there's really only three things that you need to focus on when it comes to your welding technique to be able to do a pretty good job. So we're going to break those down and we're going to break them down one by one so you only need to focus on one thing at a time and it'll have you MIG welding like a pro in no time. Let's get started. Let's talk about the setup a little bit. I'm going to be using solid wire with 75% argon and 25% CO2 for my shielding gas. You can also use straight CO2 for MIG welding. Um, when I first started welding, I used an aluminum cylinder for a soda fountain, and they're a little bit cheaper, it has straight CO2 in it, and that, uh, that worked pretty well for me, but I've since moved on to, to the argon CO2 blend, which is a little bit better, but not essential. Make sure that your ground, your work clamp, is connected directly to your material or solid through a table because that'll throw you off on MIG welding more than it will with stick or TIG welding. Make sure that your material is pretty clean and go ahead and just set your machine uh, based on the material thickness and your wire diameter to the settings that are on the chart. It's a lot more likely that your technique will throw off your weld than it is your settings will. So just set them to the chart, forget them until you get your technique down and then you can dial them in. I made a whole video about settings so check that out on my channel. Okay, so the first thing you need to pay attention to as you weld is your distance. Some people call it your stick out because it's how far the wire sticks out of the contact tip. And you want to keep that right around 3 eighths to a half inch most of the time when you're MIG welding. And so if you get propped up here, make sure that you can go all the way along your joint and maintain that distance. Now, uh, you know, it's, it's good to be able to weld freehand and just use one hand because sometimes you have to in, in certain situations. But it's always nice to be able to prop up and what I'll usually do is I'll hold my hand vertically here and my other hand here and then I'll just use that to sort of rest and maintain my distance as I work along my joint. Now you can't do this in every geometry, right? Sometimes you're upside down underneath something doing an inside corner joint and you have to do what you have to do. But in this case, you know, welding on the plate, I'm able to just move along. So, so if you watch here as I weld, I'm going to maintain that distance right here and it's, it's running pretty well. Now I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit far away and what's going to happen here are two things. One, it's not going to run as well because you have that wire is effectively a big resistor and so you kind of drop your voltage down there and the second thing that will happen is your shielding gas isn't able to get down to the weld pool and so you're going to be likely to get a lot of porosity there in the weld. Now on the other hand, I'm going to go ahead and move in really close here and as I weld close, right, the thing that can uh, happen that's really going to get you is you're going to burn that wire right back into your contact tip and you can weld it right to it and kind of make a mess. So anyway, you want to make sure that you're not too far, not too close in and the best way to practice that, honestly, is before you're welding, go ahead and take some dry runs, right? Until you can do it not welding, don't pull that trigger, right? And so make sure, okay, I'm holding that, that distance all the way along. Make sure you're able to maintain it and then go ahead and try running a few things. That's the first thing. Distance. Okay, so once you have your distance right, the next thing to work on is your angle. And you can think of your angle in two different directions. One is called your work angle and that's right here. So let's say I was welding this joint, this T-joint right there, and uh, I have my MIG gun in right here. The work angle is where I'm sitting right there, right? And so if I'm welding a butt joint like this, I'm going to want to be straight up and down with the plate, at least in this welding position. If I'm welding this T-joint here, I'm going to be want I'm going to want to come in right around 45 degrees. You might drop it just a hair, but pretty close to 45 degrees. And so that's that's what you want to maintain there. Now the other one is your travel angle. And that is the angle along the direction that you're welding. And you usually want to be somewhere between 10 degrees pushing or 10 degrees dragging. And you can debate whether push or drag is better. If you drag, you'll probably get a little bit more penetration. Uh, if you're welding aluminum, you really need to push so that you don't uh, get a bunch of soot on it. But uh, if you're just starting out, just pick one and, and do what feels comfortable to you. I usually push. So um, you get set up there on your angle and then practice it just the same as your distance and just do these dry runs and make sure you can maintain that angle. What happens to a lot of people is as they weld along, you'll kind of rock it like this and by the end, you're sitting just about parallel to the plate. So you need to make sure you're getting all the way across the joint and make those dry runs. Until you can make a dry run 
and feel comfortable that you're maintaining your angles all the way along, don't pull that trigger. I make dry runs all the time. And so, just keep practicing that. Now what happens um, if you get carried away with your angles is you'll get a lot of spatter and, and it'll really make kind of a mess, right? And then when you start welding out of position, that's where your angle becomes much more critical. So when you're welding in vertical or overhead positions, you wanna make sure that you maintain the right angle there. You're typically gonna want to point your MIG gun up a little bit anytime you're welding um, either vertical or uh, an overhead like that there. You wanna make sure that you're pointing up a little bit more than you normally would. All right, once you have your distance and your angle worked out, now you can focus on your movement. And there's two aspects to movement. One is your travel speed, how fast you're moving along. So you can see when I'm welding too fast here, the beat's just very narrow. On the other hand, where I'm welding too slow, it gets really wide and it'll tend to sink through if you're welding on thin material and you might burn a hole right through your, your part. The other is manipulation. And there's a few different ways that you can move. You can um, weave back and forth. You can do some little curly cues. There's some, you can weave and have a curve to that, which I kind of like because then you're touching the, the front end of the puddle. And it's usually best if you don't stay right in the center. If you touch the sides back and forth, and if you're welding something thicker to something thinner, stay a little bit longer on the thicker part, and then just visit the thin, and stay on the thick, and then visit the thin, right, with your weave. So it gives you a lot of options uh, there when you start weaving, but uh, whatever you do, there's no need to get carried away with it. And in some cases, stringer beads where you're running straight along work just fine. Let's just take a minute to look at these different welds here. Um, so the weld here at the top is one that I did that uh, ran pretty well. Then I ran one with too long of an arc here and there's a bunch of little holes in it and so you can be confident if you were to cut that up, it'd be full of porosity like a sponge and it wouldn't be a solid weld. This is with the arc too short and you can see right here where it just burned out when I got the contact tip right up close to it. Right here, the angle was way too far, and that does a couple of things. One, it increases the arc length, um, but it also, uh, you know, had, had quite a bit of spatter, and it's just a little out of control. This weld right here is too fast, so you can just see it's really small, narrow. Right here is when I was moving too slow, so it's a big old fat weld, and you might burn right through your material if you're welding something relatively thin and you run too slow. Um, right here is where I made some little uh, curly cues. Here's with a zigzag weave, and, and either one of those techniques works pretty well. Okay, so those are the three things to focus on, and you can learn a lot taking dry runs before you even light an arc, and then get some scrap metal and just practice. Practice on the bench, get things tuned in before you get onto your project, and you can learn a lot faster just by running a bead, paying attention to one thing at a time, mastering that distance the angle, and then your movement. So you can get started, practice these things, and you'll be running like a pro in no time. If you like this, make sure to subscribe below, and we'll see you next time.